Um, welcome to Flourish. Uh, I'm here to introduce Troy Dawson. Um, he's our next speaker. He worked at Fermilab for about 18 years as a, one of the lead developers on Scientific Linux and uh, Fermi Linux. And today he's here to talk about OpenShift, which is um, it's basically for web developers who use free and open source languages to develop, test, and deploy their apps. So I introduce Troy Dawson. Thank you very much. Uh, it's really good to be here at Flourish. Uh, I actually appreciate the occasional technical difficulties because if everything's perfect, I get really nervous. So I'm not, not that nervous. Um, I also want to say that the other person that developed Scientific Linux with me is here in the audience. Connie is here. Um, it, was, it was great working with her all those years. Um, so OpenShift. Let's, let's get right to it. I, I'm going to be doing a lot of demonstrations at the end. It, OpenShift is great to talk about, but uh, it gets boring really fast. The demonstrations really give you a feel for what it really is. So OpenShift is PaaS. It's PaaS by Red Hat. What in the world is PaaS? Platform as a Service. It's another one of those four-letter acronyms that's come along with the cloud. The cloud's not... The cloud doesn't want three-letter acronyms. All the cloud stuff wants four. Um, so basically, platform as a service means that you code your, your app. This is a web app. It could be like uh, the last guy had his little one that he was going to make into a clock. Um, you don't have to do anything with the servers. You just push the button or whatever the command is. It goes up into the cloud. It gets deployed. And everybody gets to enjoy it. Sounds simple. Um, reality it is simple. Uh, what it is not is it, we get mixed up with infrastructure as a cloud. I, 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 I hate that one because I can't even say it. Um, infrastructure as a cloud basically says, you know, you've got some, some cloud machines up there. That's not what, what PaaS is. Uh, with that, you have to do a lot of work, almost like with your physical servers. It's not software as a service. Software as a service is where somebody else puts their stuff up, like Salesforce or something like that, and you use their software or their Drupal or their WordPress or whatever. That's not what this is because you might want to mess with the code of, of whatever it is. Okay. So, like we said, it's platform as a service. Why do you want to do this? Um, I don't know how many of you guys are actually web developers or how many of you are sysadmin or just hobbyists. Um, but when you stick your code up in the cloud or up on the, on the web, anywhere, I actually got to read this. I have a screen here. Um, oh, this is not the slide I was think, talking to. Let's go to the next one. OK. Um, when you put your cloud up anywhere, um, these are all the things you have to do. I mean, I was a sysadmin for a long time. You've got to get the hardware. If you're in a big company, that means you've got to put in a rec. That means you've got to get it turned down. You've got to put it in again, get it turned down at least twice. You get it up, and then you've got some hardware. Then you've got to get the IT team in to put on the software. They've got to continually do the soft security updates. Um, and then if you, if you have real production services, you have a development where you've got to do all the same stuff again. You have production where you've got to do all the same stuff again. It's a pain in the rear. Um, trust me, I've, I've done it. Uh, I wasn't, me and Connie weren't just scientific Linux people. We were also sysadmins at the same time. Uh, with the PaaS, all you have to do, you got a good idea, hey, put it up there. Uh, code it. We do have an Eclipse plugin. Push the button, launch it, it's up there. You don't have to worry about the domain names. You don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. Um, I love this quote from Gardner. Uh, I don't know where, it, this was a pre-prepared slide for me, but the use of platform as a service technology will enable IT organizations to become more agile and more responsive to the business needs. All right, that sounds like marketing speak, and it is. And I know I'm sounding like a marketing person right now. I, I sort of am, but, oh, I've got two more sort of marketing slides I'm gonna tell you about. Why do you want to use the OpenShift thing? 
I mean, they, we didn't just invent paths, the word paths. There's a couple other paths out there. Why do you want to use OpenShift as opposed to the others? Um, first, it's, it's based on open source software, and it works only with open source software. Uh, we are not putting in, well, what's a nice closed proprietary language? I don't know, we're not putting those in. <laughs> I don't deal with them, so it's hard for me to figure out what they are. Uh, we, we do Java, the Open JDK, or actually the J. have two things to make sure you're not robots. We have a little, oh, it's blurry, so I can't even see what those, whatever these things are called, cap, CAPTCHA. Um, and you have to reply to the email so that we know that you're a real person. Uh, those of you who are here going, um, go ahead and put in the, it asks for a promo code. Go ahead, go ahead and put in Flourish. I am not actually marketing. I don't know what happens when you put in the promo codes because I've never done it. I will probably, well, I'm already signed up. Anyway, you guys can do that. So you've signed up, installed the client tools. I am, like I said, I'm not a Java person. There is an Eclipse plugin for those of you who like to use Eclipse. I've never done it, so I can't tell you how. Um, there is a, we're getting a lot of our tools up in the web. Uh, I will be showing some of those. 
I am a text-based person. Uh, we do have the client tools in Fedora and Apple. They're called RubyGem RHC. That's, that does not stand for Red Hat Cloud. Do not remember that. I don't know what it's supposed to stand for, but um, just like RPM does not stand for Red Hat Package Manager, that does not. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, I don't know who names some of these things. Uh, it is a gem, it is in the, the Ruby Gems thing, so if you're not Fedora or an Apple user, a gem install RHC. create and then dash m for the name of your domain and you look uh, you got to put in your login uh, a domain I'm going to show you what the domains actually are they're not this is what an a openshift domain is, looks like so when you do we have laser pointers that's something I forgot bummer it's okay do we have a big long yardstick I will point. That's okay. So it says here, af after I created my application, I did an application create, and I called mine my PHP. So it's called my PHP dash York Noswa. That's my domain. Um, I think about it and read it backwards. Dot rhcloud.com. So we've got an app name. Uh, we've got a domain. And whenever you create an app, you get a default app. So it's not just a blank page. It, uh, this is actually is one of those embedded graphics. But you can change this however you want. And it actually has little comments in here on how to proceed if you want to. So you create your application. OK, enough slides. No, I got to go on. Sorry. I know it's still boring. The demos are much more exciting than and talking about all this. Um, two things I gotta tell you about. We use Git to push and pull your code. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with Git, it's like uh, CVS, SVN subversion. Um, in my opinion, I, I've used, at Formulab I use mainly CVS and subversion, and now with Red Hat I'm using Git. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but um, once you're used to it, it is, it's a lot better. Um, GitHub also is where you're going to find a lot of examples. Um, say you want to put up a Drupal server or WordPress server. There's already an example how to do that. And it, you can have it up in um, literally five minutes. Um, and, people, and people are putting more and more examples up there as they go on. Um, coworker. Just figured out how to do an etherpad. That's going to be one of my, my demos. We put it up there. It's not even Red Hat employees putting them up there. Um, for that, go to the GitHub slash OpenShift, and you'll see a lot of examples. So here's all you have to do to deploy your code. So this is the same. Oh, no, it's not. It's my WordPress one. So we, we created the app. We then edited our code. And all you have to do is do a git commit and then push. And it goes up to the cloud. It gets compiled if it needs to be compiled. Uh, and it gets pushed up and you can start working with it. OK, finally, um, I'm sorry I don't have any robot arms because that was really cool. Um, but um, this is basically demos are going to be. Oh, did we got a laser pointer? Yay. Thank you. And if I push the wrong button, that's going to change channels on me. Top right one. Yay. Good enough. OK. Because I'm going to be standing here during the demos. So basically, you'll see we're going to create the app. Uh, we're going to add some sort of database. You don't, your application doesn't necessarily have to have databases. Uh, we, ha we currently have supported uh, MySQL, Postgres, uh, MongoDB. 
a lot of things are using the MongoDB. Um, this, for my demos, most of them I'm going to be pulling things from GitHub. I'll show you my, my version of his clock, because if I have time. And uh, then we push it up and then you, then you see it. So let's, is that my last slide? Yeah. Okay, so let, enough of these things. Let's look at the demos. Okay. So my first one, I'm going to do completely by, uh, where's my, that's right, I have a mouse. Completely by text mode, because uh, being in Linux, I really like text mode. Okay. And this is just me. I like to keep everything in one, one directory. Let's get rid of that Drupal stuff. Okay, so I want to learn how to put up an Etherpad. So I go to the OpenShift. Uh, in case you can't remember, you type OpenShift, and then let's, let's do GitHub. And there we go, uh, OpenShift GitHub. Well, there's already a lot of examples there. Uh, so if we go there, we let's do the full screen just so that you can see. Come on, GitHub, there we are. Go there, it's Clients Tool, JBoss, Mongo, Bottle, whatever that is, Django, Joomla, nope, Node.js, the wiki, there's the Etherpad. Just so you know, there's a whole bunch of others. They're, they're continually being added to. All right, where'd my Etherpad go? There's my Etherpad. Go to Etherpad example, and not only will it have the code, there, here's all the code, but in all the readmes for these examples, they have step-by-step -step how to set it up. So, Here's the first step, RHC, app create, etherpad, node.js. So we're going to make a node.js application. Uh, come on. Cut and paste. Now it's going to ask for my password. I've already signed up and got a password. Um, to, in case anybody's hacking into this, I will be changing my password as soon as this is over. So let's create that application. Remember, we haven't pushed any code up. Um, my op yes, my OpenShift password. Um, when you when you sign up, it says you know what's what's your password, um, and you can change that. Yes, it's not my local password. Um, now it is going to have a pop up here. When you're doing local, now this password is because it, it uses SSH to do a lot of going back and forth. And my SSH key, I personally have signed. Um, that's what this second password is. If I hadn't signed, ah, my, my microphone is, I only have to ask this once just because I've, it's, Okay. Okay. So it put all that stuff down there, and it tells you two things. It says, hey, you know what? Here's your URL. This is, I now have a live thing. Let's hurry and put that into our thing so we can see. Yep, there's an open shift. Let me scroll down a little bit. So it tells you a little bit about how to, how to edit things, but it also told us the git URL. And if you ever, this, these are live instances, you can SSH into them, but that's, since I'm trying to s tell you how fast, e fast, how easy it is, I'm not gonna tell you about SSHing into them unless we really get into time. Is this thing working? 
Uh, okay. So we did our first step in the GitHub thing. What else does it say? Okay, we need a database. Um, each instance, each app, although there's several apps in the cloud running on the same machine, each app, you've got to embed your own database so that your database isn't talking to his database. You're talking to your own little database here. Uh, you can make it so that it, it contacts some external database if you have that. Uh, but for our Etherpad, we want a Mongo database. And I'm going to... Um, hey, I'm actually going to clear the screen here. <laughs> it tells you what your database password is. Um, for, for all these things, there's actually also variables to access the database password. So what is our next, next, steps, that we, oops, next steps that we need to go to? Okay, now we need to do a git pull, which is going to pull things from the GitHub. So we do all this. And a lot of these examples are made to do, to be just cut and paste. Oh, sorry, we scrolled all the way down. Okay, now here comes the, the last step. So we're now going to do a git push. Git push, which is going to take the code that's on my laptop here and push it up into the cloud. And as you look, it's actually is, um, NPM stands for Node.js package manager. So it's actually pulling down Node packages. If this is Ruby, it would pull down gems. If it was Python, it would pull down... Eggs. What are they? Eggs. Eggs. Oh, brother. <laughs> PHP, it would be... No, pairs? No, I can't remember. Anyway, it pulls down the, the things so you're not restricted to whatever we have installed on your machine. You're able to pull down your stuff uh, it then compiles it. Well, I know this works, so let's not worry about those permission denied things. Oh, that looks scary. <laughs> One of the other ones. Um, so then we come here, it says, well, wait a sec. Well, let's hit refresh. And now we have an Etherpad. Now, I will admit this is not the most secure Etherpad in the world. Uh, new pad. That's, that's all we have for authentication is clicking new pad. So I would recommend this just be used as an example. But it's sort of fun on, on conferences that uh, you can actually just leave it up here. And I don't know if anybody's used it with Etherpad, but um, if anybody else goes to, oh, that's a big long URL. If anybody else goes to this URL, you know, I can, I, this is, Troy, anybody else in the room can actually log into that and start typing away and we'll all see it. Um, so there's an Etherpad. So I said earlier we're trying to move a lot of things up into the cloud. Into the cloud, into the web. It actually is in the cloud. So, so here I am at the OpenShift site. I want to create an app from here. Can I do that? The answer is yes. So first I got to sign in, and this is the, you know, my, my login is, you're going to all know, yortnaswad at gmail.com. This is my conference one. It's not my work one. Uh, my password that's just for this conference. Is this really? Yeah, there we are. Okay, so I'm logged in. And um, interesting, it scales. If you're on a bigger screen, we've got it so that it scales. You can actually do it on your iPhone and whatever, and it actually looks pretty good. Um, so I want to create a new application. So let's click on that. It says, okay, what kind do you want to do? Do you want to do JBoss, Ruby, PHP, Python? Well, I'm a big fan of Drupal. Um, and this one, we actually 
Drupal actually does have authentication, so we can do it better. So let's go to here. Let's go to Drupal. Drupal's one of the earlier ones, so I suspect it's towards the bottom. Dancer, there's Drupal. Oop. Okay. So I'm not going to be able to cut and paste, but uh, app create Drupal. So okay, Drupal needs to be PHP. So let's go over here. Let's do a, which one is PHP? There's PHP. Let's select that one. Okay. This is okay. What do you want to call it? Well, I want to call it Drupal. And let's create it. Um, it'll take about the same amount of time. The biggest slowdown in this is actually pushing the namespace up. Oh, that was quick. Okay, sometimes it's faster than others. Oh, the application named Drupal already exists because I was trying it before I came here. So let's go to my account, wait, my applications. Do, 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 do. Drupal, oh, there it is right there. Well, it's kind of hard to do a demo if, uh, let's open that in a new tab. It's hard to do a demo if it's already there. Yep, flourish is now, get going. I did this right before he left. Well, you know what? We don't want this anymore, so let's... Um, wait a sec, I know there's a delete button. Okay, let's go to details on Drupal. Maybe that's where my delete button is. Okay, there's delete. Now, it better... Are you sure? This is, if you delete it, it's all gone. Um, all your code, everything is all gone. This one I don't care about because, you know, I didn't do a very good job of setting up my Drupal. Well, it's happening. Just so you guys know, if you're wondering, there is swag up here on this table. Uh, there is T-shirts, mm, maybe enough for everybody. Uh, but uh, we put them here just so that uh, I want you guys to be. Okay, the, the application Drupal has been deleted. So if I go here, you like, hey, Drupal's gone. Okay. So let's create a new application. We know it needs to be PHP. I'm going to call it by the exact same name, Drupal, because I am not creative at all. Do, 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 do. Um, also, while we're waiting for that, let's look and see. Uh, Drupal needed a MySQL database. So Drupal's using MySQL. It's not using, um, what was the other, Mongo. The other one was using MongoDB. Okay, so I could access it there. But... Uh, Uh, let's go back to my applications. There's Drupal. So we want to look at the details. So we can add... Oh. Now, if you add things to your thing, it's called a, um, a cartridge. I did not name the name. I don't know where the name cartridge comes from. But it's basically, if you, if you click on this, we'll, we'll show you all the cartridges you can put on here. And these are pre-done cartridges. It doesn't mean you can't put your own database up there. It doesn't mean you can't put your own stuff up there. It's your area. But uh, to make it much easier, see we got cron stuff. We got MySQL, Mongo, Postgres, metrics. Oh, that's experimental. Let's, let's, let's get the database up. First, if we have time, we'll do metrics. Did I click on that? Is it, nothing's churning. Okay, select. We want MySQL. There we are. 
Uh, it's double check to make sure we click the right thing. Now, you'll notice I did all this on the web. So my Drupal stuff is up there. It looks, it looks like this. It looks like our basic login screen. Well, I just did everything on the web. How am I going to get my code up there? How am I going to get Drupal up there? So, like I said, there is some GUI tools. I, I'm more of a text guy. I'm going to show you the text way to do this. For those that, that like GUIs, I apologize. But, um, sorry. Okay. So, if you look, I, I have clock, which is one of my other things. I have my etherpad. These are both Git, Git things. But I don't have my Drupal. So I do my RHC and domain show. So domain is going to sh it's going to show me everything about. Oh. Before I do this, I probably ought to autom automatically have my password going. It's going to show me everything about what I have, um, and it'll show me URLs. It'll show me. It will come back. Oh, come on. Now, I didn't tell you guys this, but uh, one, of, one of the things about Fermilab is we have Unix users every month. And I usually gave a demonstration. And um, I have this, this good reputation for Fermilab of, this is about 50% of them failed. So when, when he's saying, you know, what's the odd, you know, how many people think my demo is going to fail, I was pretty confident that uh, it would fail. This has actually taken a very long time. I think something's wrong here. And something's... So let's, let's just try it again. Uh, and that might have been my password, but... Oh, okay. See, it comes up really quick. Um, I, I think that's more with my connection. I don't think that's with things. So I have clock. I have my etherpad. There's my Drupal. Now if you look on here, you know, it says when it was mated, user ID. This is a get URL. So what I can do, for those of you familiar with, with git, I can then do a git clone and then just put in that URL. Now, it's an SSH URL. It's not an HTTP, but Git knows how to do that. And there we go. We've got everything here. Now, if I do an LS, there's Drupal. Then I can go over here and say, oops, that's not what I was doing. Over here. And where was my Drupal thing? I'm just going to do a cut and paste because uh, if I do anything more than that, it's going to take a lot of time. So it's downloading everything from GitHub. Uh, we're in Drupal. Then we do our Git push. Now, up to this point, everything's just been canned. You know, you're like, great. You know, uh, you're, you're showing us how to do canned projects. Well, it's a good place to start. It's a good way to get your feet wet. Um, now let's look here. It'll, be, it'll look like Drupal, and I'm going to hurry and log in and change the password before somebody beats me to it. <laughs> um, because if anybody went to that website, it says what the password is. Uh, hello, Ed. Come on. <laughs> That's the fun thing about university things. Sometimes they're fast, but sometimes they're slow. Come on. Oh, no. Is somebody actually trying to beat me to this? Sorry. No. Where does... Okay, where in the world is, is the... Change my password. Oh, the edit tab. Thank you. Okay. Okay, there's the old password. I'm going to change this to 
Oh, good. That's a good password. And you'll also know I am connected through a wire, so those of you who are sniffing, sorry. <laughs> okay, so the changes have been saved. Um, so I really hate the look of Drupal, the basic Drupal. Um, I like to, to change the themes. That's usually the first thing. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the security stuff. It, it tells you on that page how to do it. So there's Bartek, there's Garland, there's Stark. You know what? I don't like any of those. And you know what? The, let's say the company that I have has its own theme. And uh, it's called Zen, which those of you who do Drupal know that that's one of the default themes, but that's okay. <laughs> so I, I want to put on my company's default theme, which is Zen. So I go into themes. Uh, I just happen to have it tarred up here. Uh, Zen. So I put on my company's default theme. I'm going to do a git add Zen. See, very, very much like CVS. Git commit. Let's fat finger a few things. Git commit dash m. Uh, uh, this is a comment, whatever. And then I'm going to do a git push. Now this time shouldn't take as long as the first time uh, because everything's already downloaded, everything's compiled. All it's doing is putting up the theme and restarting the, the app. So we go here, let's reload this page. And... Time. Okay, so we have Bartek, we have Seven, we have Garland, we have Star K, hey, we have Zen. Let's enable that and set it as the default. All right, now let's see what what it looks like. Eh, don't change that. Okay, it no longer is a, in my opinion, ugly blue Drupal thing. It is now the very plain and boring Zen that my corporate headquarters makes me put on, which is not true. Red Hat doesn't make me put it on. They put some really cool stuff on. But anyway, there's things like that. So we, we started off with just the basic template, but then you can start messing with it on your own. Um, I have to be done at 10 after, right? That includes questions? Okay, I will just show you my clock. I'm not going to... My clock isn't as cool as his clock, but that seems to be the clock. And then we'll do questions. That's why dot rhcloud.com. So this is my clock. Uh, you'll notice it has four hands, and it is, well, they're actually looking normal right at the moment. Uh, it has a little bit different algorithm. So we'll leave that in the background. Come on, come on, you can do it. And there it goes. <laughs> so my hands aren't, aren't quite the same. Um, it's a bit of a whirlwind twirl about um, OpenShift. Um, at this point, I'm going to open it up to questions, if we have any questions. Uh, we have three. Uh, That's a good question. Now, I had already set mine up and I had done mine. Yes, there is. Um, in the command lines, if we go into here, you'll see that there's a dot open shift thing, and in here is a file called expressconf. Um, so it has my default, default username. Uh, you can technically put your password in there. I wouldn't recommend it unless, whatever. I, Yes.
Okay. Yeah. Um, at, at the present time, uh, before it's open sourced, I'm not sure what the plan is after it's open sourced. Although, because we'll, people could set up their own. At the present time, yes, we moderate those cartridges. But if people have a, a cartridge or something like that that they want to to have on there, we do have a vote in the community thing. We do have a voting thing. And that gives us a priority of what we, people want to work on. Um, you also said one of the things is you don't want to have to go through GitHub to, to your local thing up there. I do know that that has been voted on, and I do know that people are working on it. But I don't know how, so that you could just put your code right on the web thing. They're trying to expand that as much as possible. I have no idea on the time frame of that. So, so you as a user want to upgrade your, your database schema. Um, there's, the, the thing that comes to my mind right now is that you can actually SSH into it. So if you have a script that migrates your database, you could, you could SSH in and actually do it by hand. Um, because that's something that we don't want to be messing with your database. Um, so if... So if you have a script for migrating your database, you could run it by hand on the, yeah, on there. There, there might be. <laughs> I, I, I know the things that I know, but there's a lot of a, uh, a lot of the code that I was like, wow, this is, like like all the web interface stuff. I, I had no part of that, and I just look at it and go, oh, that look, that works pretty good. Um, so th there might be hooks into to go in, into your database. I am not sure. I, it's terrible when the person. If you go onto the website, uh, either the forums, OpenShift IRC, um, or the OpenShift email list, um, there's people that would be able to answer your question. Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, that's been available for a couple things. Uh, I just personally don't have any, so I've never done it, but yes. By, by default, you're going to get three domains. Uh, we're actually going to start calling them gears, but I still like the term apps. I, uh, they change names on me. Um, you get three apps free. Um, if you, and each app currently gets uh, 512 megs of memory, uh, one gig of disk space, and the network bandwidth we don't throttle as far as how much, but you can't suck up the whole machines. You get so much percentage. Um, it, it, that's using the, the C group. C, I get the name wrong every, every time. But we'll just say I should actually know it, too, because we use it all the time. But um, you do get a percentage. If you need more, that's where, now currently, if you need more, uh, send us an email. We will ask you what your application is, and we, we will give it to you. We're, ju we're just trying to find out why people are needing more or less. Um, but then when we do start charging, that is going to be, I have, 
we have a date for the open sourcing. We don't have a date for when we're going to start charging for these extra services. Um, all I know is it's sometime. Um, but at some time, yes, that's how we're going to make the money. You'll get your three apps. If you need five, ten, a hundred, then you'll have to pay so much per, per app. And then if you need to go over you know, the memory, over the, the bandwidth, or if you need these fancy things, then that will be charged. Currently, you can get that for free. We'll ask you why. Um, and it's not a, oh, we're going to throttle you. It's, it's because we're trying to find out why people are using it, how they're using it. How am I doing on time? One more question? Or? OK, one more question. Yes? Um, I'm kind of curious with the Um, it depends on your programming skills. In, in our team, for me, I've tried it and failed miserably. And another person has tried it and he's got two different types of Python running on his and all these other things. And so I know it's doable. And um, I, unfortunately, I know what I know how to do and some people are, are better at, at it than others. So I can't say how easy it is because for me it's hard. And for him, it's easy. Yet. Um, actually, yeah, I think they're going to, that's going to be one of the how-tos, is how to build your own cartridge. Um, and I think that's going to become in the documentation at some point. Because... Uh, lunch is at Illinois C right now, and in half an hour we'll have talks here and there. Meg Ford's talk is over there. She's going to talk about GNOME Outreach Program, and right here is, uh, well, look at the schedule. Oh, lightning talk sign up. It's a Google form. It's on the registration table. So check it out. Just ask any.